What's up, y'all? We're going to talk about the second half of that tune, The Humors of Bally Lachlan. Covered the first half last time. If you haven't already seen that, definitely check that out. Get the A and the B parts. Here we're going to break down the C and the D parts and all the ornamentation that goes along with it. All right, y'all, I'm going to play this on my Humphrey D whistle. Grab whatever whistle you feel like playing. If you feel like playing on the flute, that works too. The fingers are all the same. Here's the basic melody for the C part. Uh, this is, again, a four-part tune, so this is the third of four. Um, this is the only one that really spends any time in the upper octave. Fun fact, a lot of time on four-part tunes in the Irish and the Scottish tradition, the third part is the weird one. Don't know why, they just seem to always be the case in these tunes. All right, basic melody, here we go. That's the first half of it. Now, hopefully you got that it's fairly repetitive. It's really two phrases. It's the bit on the F sharps and the G. And then you get this kind of C naturally D modal bit. Second half of that is a repeat. It's very similar, but the ending is just a little bit different. Here's that. So again, just the last section of that is different. I'll play the whole B part all the way through just to see how much of it you can get here. that worked. Again, it's fairly repetitive. You know, it's the same phrase sort of copied and pasted. So hopefully you're able to pick that up. The uh, D part, the fourth part, is going to sound real similar to the A part, but with just a couple little tweaky differences. So here it is. Hopefully that last half of that part sound real familiar because that's really a lot of, of the A part. The, the difference is the first line of the D part versus the first line of the A part. So I'll play that section in just the first bit. It's got this kind of bouncy thing. That's the whole thing. So hopefully we'll get those two parts. Let's talk about some ornaments because with that repetition, that's a good opportunity to try and mix it up a little bit, you know? I like to punch up those higher notes of the C part because it's the first time we're really breaking into that second octave. So I kind of really like to build the excitement, so to speak. So, so I'm punching each of those highest note in the phrase as I've used a lot with a, just a simple grace note. Sometimes as I land on that E, I'll, I'll get that extra grace note in there, but sort of an optional one there. I'll do that triplet almost every time. Uh, it's got a really good rhythmic sound, which I think works pretty well with that part. And again, we've been major for that first part with the F sharp to D and the G bit. So having that minor third or the having that flat seventh, there we go, uh, is an interesting dichotomy, let's say so. Very happy. And that, that, that kind of darkish uh, uh, triplet in there, I think, sounds kind of cool. And I could do a couple of things there. I'll either just, sh uh, just quickly do a cut on that G. Could do the same thing twice, that's fine. Or kind of sliding into an extra roll there. That works harmonically with melody. It works okay. Same kind of thing I would do in the beginning of there. Um, could, um, I'll do that sometimes. I will short roll each of those. That's kind of a cool variation, I think. Um, the 
trick, I think, with that tune, or with that part anyway, is to find some way to vary it a little bit so it's not always bump, 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 bump every time. You know, you just want to mix it up a little bit, and sometimes some kind of bonus rolls or just sitting on a note like that gives you a good, uh, a good trick, good way to do it. The last phrase. Not much else I would do differently there, except I do tend to bounce that E. As I land, go from G to E, I'm doing that extra finger tap there. And then into, this, into the D part. Now the D part is interesting because on the flute, if you're playing this on flute, you get a really cool um, uh, rhythmic punchy effect that you can do with the low D, which I try to mimic on the whistle. You don't quite get it, but here's the idea. I'll chop that, uh, that first A with a short roll. And again, hit it the second time. So I'll roll that F sharp. I uh, usually slide into a roll. Slide out of it, and then the this little phrase is kind of my favorite part of it. You could do kind of an interesting little melodic change there, or... do a couple of rolls on there so you're bouncing off of an E and a G. Ultimately that's kind of the chord that you're working with so there's a couple of ways that you could make it different each time but some variant of that. <laughs> Nothing else particularly special there except a roll on A and a lot of times I'll hit that high D again. Highest note in the phrase I like to do something different could just stop there. It's a good place to, to intentionally do an accent or a hard stop on a note. Or now that phrase I'm sure we talked about a fair bit in the last video, crowns. That's my favorite thing to do there and we're kind of bringing it home because uh, we do that a lot through the first two parts, the A and the B part. It doesn't happen in the C part and then we do it again in the D part. So optional, you could always just go that works too. I like the crayon because any chance we get to use it, I like to throw it in there because it's cool and it's unique to these types of instruments. Now, the flute folks may find this interesting. Um, on that C part, or the D part rather, you can really punch that note up where you can't really do that on the low whistle or on the, the, the D whistle at all. You can do it on the flute. Same thing there. Any chance you get, you can bounce that note pretty well, I think. So flute players have a little bit of a distinct advantage on a tune like this. Pipers as well, which is really a, it's a piping tune that we're kind of mimicking the best we can. So let me know what y'all think about this tune. Um, if you dig this in two parts, it kind of can't be helped. Otherwise, it would have been a really long video. We'll get back to single videos next time. And uh, yeah, see you guys then. Cheers. <laughs>